In this video, we're going to talk about linear versus exponential growth and decay. So let's start with this question. Consider the relationship between x and y outlined in this table below. We've got some ordered pairs here. When x is negative 1, y is a fourth. When x is 0, y is 1. x is 1, y is 4. When x is 2, y is 16. Which of the following statements are true? All right, so we've got three statements here, and we want to decide whether these are true or false. Let's just start with statement number one. The relationship between x and y is linear. And remember that linear just means that we add the same amount to y per unit increase in x. So let's take a look at our table here to see if this is the case. Okay, so x goes from negative 1 to 0 to 1 to 2. These are all unit increases. We're adding 1 each time. Okay, so we've got unit increases in x. So let's see what's happening with y. y is starting with a fourth, and then it increases up to 1. So that's an increase of 3 fourths. Does it do that again? Well, no. From 1 to 4, that's an increase of 3. And then from 4 to 16, that's an increase of 12. So we're not adding the same amount to y per unit increase in x. So no, it's the relationship between x and y is not linear. Okay, how about the next one, statement two, the relationship between x and y is exponential? Well, let's recall what exponential means. Exponential means that we multiply y by the same amount per unit increase in x. So let's see if that's true about this table here. So again, we've got unit increases in x, and what's happening to y? What are we multiplying by? Well, a fourth times what makes one? A fourth times four makes one. And then one times four makes four. Four times four equals 16. So, so there we go, we're just multiplying by four every time. And that means that, yes, the relationship between x and y is exponential because we're multiplying y by the same amount, four, every time we increase x by one unit. So good, two is a true statement. All right, last statement, statement three. If x is increased by one, then y increases by a factor of four. Now remember that increasing by a factor of four really means multiplying by four. So let's see if that's the case. Well, we already saw that every time we increase x by one, we multiply y by four. That's what we figured out in statement two. So yes, if x is increased by one, then y increases by a factor of four. And now we've gone through all the statements and we saw that only two and three are true. So there's our final answer. Next problem. Celia works as a software engineer and earns $6,000 every two weeks. Which of the following statements are true? First statement, the relationship between the number of weeks Celia works per year and her annual wage is linear. Is that true? Well, why don't we fill out a table to help us out? On the top row of the table, let's put the number of weeks worked. And then on the bottom row, let's put the total earnings in, in dollars that Cecilia earns from working those weeks. So first of all, let's say Cecilia works two weeks. We know that if she works two weeks, then she earns $6,000. Let's keep on going from here. So now say that she works another two weeks, and then, of course, she earns another $6,000. So two plus two makes four, of course, and then 6,000 plus 6,000 makes 12,000 and then say she works for another two weeks, so plus two more weeks, and then she makes another $6,000. Then she will have worked for four plus two, which is six weeks, and earns 12,000 
plus 6,000, which is $18,000. Okay, so now let's go back to the statements. What do we think? The relationship between the number of weeks Celia works per year and her annual wage is linear. Remember, linear is adding a constant amount per increase in x. All right, so now that we've got our table, let's look back to these, these statements here and determine whether they're true or false. First statement, the relationship between the number of weeks Celia works per year and her annual wage is linear. Is this table linear? Well, if it's linear, then the total earnings has to be increasing by the same amount per unit increase in the number of weeks worked. Now, the number of weeks worked here is increasing in chunks of two. So, so two is actually our unit increase in number of weeks worked because in the context of this problem, a single unit is two weeks. So the question is, is the total earnings increasing by a constant amount every time we increase the number of weeks worked by a chunk of two weeks? Um, well, yeah, it's increasing by $6,000 every two weeks. So yes, it, it is linear. And then the next statement, the relationship between the number of weeks Celia works per year and her annual wage is exponential, that's a very similar question, but now we're asking if we multiply by the same amount every time we increase the number of weeks worked by some unit. Now let's see, starting with $6,000, we have to multiply that by two to get to 12,000. But if we multiply by two again, we're not going to get to 18,000, we'll get to 24,000. So no, we're not multiplying by the same amount every time. So therefore it's not exponential. Last statement, statement three, the total amount of money earned by Celia increases by $6,000 for every two weeks that she works. Well, we've got that in our table here. Every time we add two to the number of weeks worked, we have to add 6,000 to her total earnings. So yeah, Celia's total earnings increase by $6,000 for every two weeks that she works. That's true. So now we've gone through all of the statements and we can see that just one and three are correct. Here's the final question. Which of the following quantities are changing linearly and which are changing exponentially? First situation, we have a property that increases in value by 6% each year. All right, so before we determine whether that's linear or exponential, let's just take a moment to get a stronger mathematical grip of this situation. So it's increasing in value by 6% each year. That means that the next year is all of the previous year, so 100% of the previous year, plus another 6%. So 106% of previous year. We can turn that percent into a nice decimal 106% is 1.06, so next year is 1.06 times the previous year. Okay, so really we're just multiplying the value by 1.06 each year. And now we can decide whether it's changing linearly or exponentially. Remember, linear means you're adding the same amount each time, whereas exponential means you're multiplying by the same amount each time. And in this case, we're multiplying by 1.06 each year, so it's got to be exponential. Okay, how about the next situation? A regular customer at a deli buys three pieces of chicken every day. Okay, so there's the key bit of information, three pieces of chicken every day. So that means that the next day's total, the total number of pieces of chicken that have been bought as of the next day is equal to the previous day's total plus three, because you're adding three pieces of chicken to the total every day. And we can see that we are adding the same amount every time. So that's a linear situation. We're adding the same amount. Last situation, situation three, a gallon of water evaporates from a swimming pool each week. All right, so there's, there's the key bit of information, a gallon of water evaporates from the swimming pool. So a gallon of water leaves the swimming pool every week. So that means if we want to compute the gallons next week in the swimming pool, we can start with the gallons 
the previous week and then subtract one because one gallon is evaporating out. So we're subtracting the same amount each time. You can also think we're adding negative one each time. Either way you think about it, we're changing linearly. We're not multiplying, we're adding. So now we know how to tell the difference between linear versus exponential growth and decay. And in the future, we'll keep practicing working with exponential functions, including using them to model some real-world scenarios.